Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, if you haven't come across my channel before, I'm Bethan, I'm the founder of a company called Red Digital and I help small businesses to grow their online presence. Whether that be through social media, through creating video to promote their brand, website design, SEO and a myriad of other things. So if that's something that interests you, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'm coming out with new videos every Saturday morning um, with top tips, with tricks of the trade that I've kind of picked up along the way and information that will help you to grow your online presence. But for today I'm going to talk about something particular. So when I talked about how to grow on social media and the 101 of social media in one of my most recent videos, I said this. Tip number seven is to be human and to humanize your content. It left a few questions. I wanted to dedicate a little bit of time today to specifically answer that question. How do you humanize your content? So I'm gonna be covering exactly what it is, why it works, and why you need to start doing it now. We're gonna kick things off by breaking down what humanizing actually means. It's probably not something that comes across your day-to-day -day vocabulary and I'm not surprised that it maybe ca caused a little bit of confusion here and there. So first off, to humanize your content basically means to not just be this kind of nameless, faceless brand. So if you sell a product or you sell a service, it's really easy to just put your product pictures up and put some stock imagery up that represent your service and maybe even some quotes that are relevant to your industry, that some historical quotes that previous people who have been in your industry have shared, or um, something that you've come across that's really inspired you, which are all great ways to promote your business and all great content types. I'm absolutely not saying that you shouldn't do these, but I'm saying along with these, you need to have a human element. So. To do that, there is a multitude of ways, and I'm going to get into that later. So for now, we're just going to stick with the kind of what is humanizing. And first off, it's basically anytime you see a human face that is an actual person that works with you or in your brand or somebody that you've had a meeting with, someone that you've had interaction with, not just a person that you've got a stock image of. It also doesn't actually need to be a person's face. It could be, for example, someone's hand holding a product that you're wanting to sell. Or I saw a tiling company that has in the corner of the images someone standing on the tiles. That there's almost a human touch to everything that you do. So whether it's that someone's face is in your pictures, whether it's that someone's holding your pictures, or you could either go the lesser route where people like interior decorators, you could put um, some keys and a mug and a pair of slippers in a space that you've designed and it may not be that they belong to the owners or it may not be that they were placed there um, when you were creating the design it's something that you've done after the fact for setting up for an image so when someone looks at it they may not see a person but subconsciously you'll kind of pick up that that is where a person resides that's where someone lives I guess it works in a similar way to the kind of um, estate agent thing of baking before someone comes to view your house so it feels like home and it feels safe and warm and all of these things. Now we're going to move on to why it works. I mentioned just briefly the kind of subconscious comes into play when we're talking about humanised content and that is 100% true. So this is something that you've probably seen if you've ever worked in any kind of sales or marketing before, you've seen this image. Now that's a really traditional sales funnel and the whole point of a sales funnel is to go through the concept that for someone to buy from you there's a few steps they need to go through to actually make that purchase and know that you'll deliver what you promised. It's this no like trust element. And you can take someone through a sales funnel in a social media post. You can take someone through a sales funnel in 10 calls and 4 emails and 5 social media posts they saw before that. People will move through it at different speeds, but the whole concept is that for someone to actually make that purchase, they have to at some point make their way through this no like trust. And now I want you to think, realistically, if you were going to make a purchase off of somebody, and you went and tried to find them online. You didn't know their name, you didn't know where they were based, you didn't know anything about them, their business journey, 
how they came to do what they do now, how they source the products that they sell, you might find it hard to trust them. So if you're noticing that on your social media you're not getting any conversions, you're not getting zero sales come through, then this could be why. Posting images of your product or representation of your service and your logo isn't really enough to get people to trust you. And as we previously showed, to make a sale, they ultimately have to trust you. So some brands are exempt to this. There's brands like Coca-Cola that are ultimately a name. You don't know who's behind any of what is happening, but they are just ultimately a name. And you can see that logo and purchase off that alone. But that's after years and years of reputation building. So if you're currently trying to grow your online presence and you're coming across people who have never heard of you before, they don't have that trust and that reputation in their mind already. There's also an element here of the algorithm. So the ever mysterious algorithm on all the social media platforms seems to have an element of um, favouring human content. You may notice a trend on the amount of comments, engagements and even reach of your posts that contain a person and this is completely speculative because as I said before we don't have published access to the algorithm but there is such a trend that people's faces do really well online that it's safe to assume that the algorithm favours human content and it would make sense would you be more likely to want to see a picture of your friends or a business post? And now we've kind of covered what humanising your content is and why it works. I'm going to tell you how to do it yourself. So A, thank you for listening for this long because this is the good bit. And B, stay tuned, get a notebook and like this video if it's been useful so far. Now, the first option I'm going to give you is the easiest option. And you've probably already thought of it as we've been going through this step by step doing a meet the team post, introducing the people behind your brand, introducing all of the people that work for you and work with you, even those people who are kind of um, partners of yours and anybody that works within your business, giving them a brief introduction, what they do, who they are and how they help your business. This can 100% be done in an image, but bonus points if you're able to talk your colleagues into going on video for a couple of minutes. The second option is a great option for kind of e-commerce businesses that work on a much more um, product basis. So if you're take, doing photo shoots yourself for the product, if you're doing product photography, have an extra camera that can be somebody's phone, it doesn't need to be a big investment. Have somebody take pictures of a kind of behind the scenes, what you're doing to take these product pictures. And also the one I mentioned earlier, someone holding your product. So literally get someone to like roll up their sleeve, hold your product in their hand and take the image as you usually would but just being held. And then human elements. So say you're a service-based business um, and you work by yourself. It might be really difficult for you to get pictures of a team because it's just you and then showing what you do on a daily basis is realistically sitting at a laptop. Maybe try taking pictures of your work from home setup in this situation that we're in, of the office that you're based in when things go back to normal, um, even of kind of on your way to meetings and stuff like that, and maybe put a notebook on the table that you're showing, a coffee cup, or in some way show that people have been there. And now bonus points for you if you can do a kind of day in, day out check-ins as well, and these could be on Instagram stories, so just really quick pan around, say hello to everybody that's in the office, show exciting projects that people are working on and get them to introduce what they're doing, um, if it's not commercially sensitive that is, take pictures of people who come in for meetings with you, try and get as much people on people content as you can. Another one that I love to do for all of my clients actually is to spotlight their clients, so you can show for example, if you have a product, you can show people using your product. You could do client testimonials along with a picture of them. There are so many options when you get into thinking about it. But just, it's breaking that habit of posting 
generic content. Now, realistically, that's about as much advice as I can give you over the camera without hearing your situation. So if you're looking for a little bit more tailored advice, if you're watching this and you're like, whoa, there is no way I can do this in my business. It doesn't work for me. I can't show humans with what I do. Drop me a comment below with your situation or if you've got the time, we're doing free one-on-one -on -one calls right now. So you can book 30 minutes of my time and we can go through anything that you need to go through on a Google Hangout, on Zoom, on whatever it is that you need and I can give you exact examples that you can then take forward and carry on to your business. Or if you need even more advice, we can of course take this on ourselves and Red Digital can offer the sort of social media packages that we do. Um, but yeah, that's going to be everything for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'm actually going to be filming another video straight away after this. So if you want to find out about the top apps you need to manage your marketing, stay tuned. It's going to be coming next Saturday.